Done. All right, so we're going to come first of all into Adha Mukha Virasana. Those with problems kneeling, take a look at the inset for the alternate uh, action in this. <clears throat> Obviously, if there's just a little bit of a stiffness in the thighs or the knees, then you can put a bolster or a foam pad between your bottom and your heels. We are taking the knees just slightly wider than your pelvis. The abdomen is retreating back and we're going to extend forwards, placing the hands down. So this is the action, walking forwards, releasing the head down. So if your bottom lifts up, then try first with your brick underneath your head rather than starting out putting something behind you because that can kind of prop you up and tip you into the, into the pose. So you can see like this, I definitely would need something underneath my head, but I'm already starting to curve my spine in a concave fashion, which we don't want in this pose. We want to try and open out the chest. So if your bottom lifts, try lifting your head to keep your buttocks back down in contact with your heels. So once you're in the action, Make sure that your wrists and your elbows are lifted off the floor. That your forehead is pressing down. It's quite nice to have a brick there, I have to say. But if you're not using a brick, press your forehead into the floor. Draw your shoulder blades down towards your back waist. Extend the base of your breastbone forwards towards your thumbs. Let the breath be settled. Okay, and slowly come up, sit back on your heels. Just have a quick look. We're going to come into Adha Mukha Svanasana, dog head down. But before we come into this, we're going to get this action with the hands. You're going to start out on your little finger and roll your fingers individually onto the floor. Then you're going to roll your thumb so that the thumbnail if possible, faces the ceiling. Then you're going to take your weight over the, the hands, so the shoulders and the elbows of the wrists are all in one line. You're going to come up like that and then push back. Okay, so let's do that together. So come onto your hands and knees, come up onto the little finger side. Then put down your ring finger and your ring finger, finger knuckle. See, can you keep your arms straight doing this? It's difficult. Put down your middle finger pad and your middle finger knuckle. See, can you put down your index finger pad and your index finger knuckle? Now roll your thumb so that the thumbnail faces the ceiling. Look at your elbows. Get your inner elbows facing one another. Now stack your bones. So your elbow comes over your wrist joint, your shoulder comes over your elbow joint. Press down with your index finger knuckle and your thumb pad. Have your feet hip width apart, tuck your toes under. Keeping those arms vertical to start with, lift your sitting bones up. With that verticality of the arms still there, move the abdomen towards the spine, and push the tops of the creases of the thighs back. So we're working backwards with the legs, with the abdomen. Don't let your elbows swing in. Those with hyperextended elbows, keep the arms so that the inner elbow does not swing forwards. Let the head and neck relax. Lift your toes up, lift your kneecaps up, lift your thigh muscles up, and now release back down into Adha Mukha Virasana. Now, if you need to, you can come onto your chair. Those of you who are doing the alternative action, rest the head down. Again, I would recommend using a brick for this so that your forehead is rested and your nose is free. 
Knees just a little bit wider than your pelvis so that the central plane of your thighs supports the outer sides of your ribs. Draw the shoulder blades down. Keep your elbows and your wrists lifted off the floor. Keep the abdomen softly moving back towards the spine. Keep the groins moving softly back towards the heels. And now slowly coming up. Good. We're going to come into an Uttanasana action with the buttocks to the wall. So you can always use um, a door if, uh, as long as it's not going to swing open. Or a piece of uh, sturdy furniture would be okay for this. And if the foam pads, uh, if you don't have bricks, then you can use foam pads. And if they're not high enough, then take your hands to the seat of a chair. How far you come down in this pose is really not relevant. So I'm just gonna show you how we're going to work. You would take your feet quite wide and turn the toes slightly in. So the feet are wider than the, the width of the hips. Then we lift our sitting bones up so you could should remember where your sitting bones are from having sat on them at the beginning on that brick and then take the hands down to your bricks so let's do that together all right so your heels need to be about a foot away from the wall that's 30 centimeters away from the wall with the toes slightly turned in feet wider than your hips. Press down into the outer foot bones and lean back to your wall so that your legs are at a slight slant. If you don't have a wall, then do this with legs perpendicular. Don't worry about that. So from here, press with your hands and lift those sitting bones up. Take your hands down onto your bricks just below your shoulders. So even if you can get your hands down onto the floor in this pose, I want you to use your bricks. Lift up the kneecaps, press into the outer foot bones, activate your inner ankles and extend your breastbone forwards. Draw your shoulder blades down. And now we're going to slowly come up. Good. Come away from the wall and release. Now, and just look at a point slightly above your eye level. So keep that lift through the front, that grounding down into the heel bones. So we have a two-way action here, a stretching both ways. All right, so we're going to release that out now. Okay, we're going to come into Vrukshasana. We've done this a few times of late. The focus today is keeping this area of the back body level. The temptation is when we're in any of these actions where we come out to the side to swing and distort the back of the pelvis. So we're going to use the wall to help us with this. And uh, you can use a belt or you can use your hand on your foot. So I'm just going to show you how this is going to work. You can use the back of a sofa possibly to get this levelness in the pelvis. Just be you know, mindful of safety whenever you're working with your equipment at home. So your standing leg foot will stay in Tadasana as you draw this other leg up. Now it might not come as high as I'm showing here. But the inner thigh has to resist. Now I'm quite fortunate here, I'm against a chimney breast, so I can hold on to that and that gives me a little bit of extra leverage to start to understand where the back of the pelvis needs to be in this pose. So let's do that together. If you use your belt, that's absolutely fine. It's not a problem. Your heels now are not quite as far away from the wall as they were before. So probably about six inches, 15 centimeters away from the wall. 
you turn your right foot out, we're trying to already get this rotational action in the joint of the femur. You hold on to your belt and you draw that foot up. Now, you can hold on to your belt. Certainly if your foot is down here, you will need to hold on to your belt because if you hold on to your ankle, you will be bending forwards, which we don't want because this is a pose to create a nice open chest as well as a pose for the um, pelvic actions. Your outer hip moves in. Your inner thigh resists the pressure of the foot. So yes, the foot is pressing strongly against that inner thigh, but you've got to resist with your outer hip and your inner thigh. So really activate that inner thigh. Now, the tendency is to push this knee back to the wall, but you'll see that if you push your right knee back to the wall, your left buttock will come away from it. So what you need to do is get the length from the outer hip down to the knee, all along that femur. So, as I say, I've got a bit of an advantage here, but you can always just cup your fingers to the wall. I've got the wrong trousers on for this today. It's a little bit colder, so, and I've got leggings that are a bit high in lycra content, so the foot slips. But this is the action. Groin to knee lengthens. Lift your chest. Lengthen. Lift your chest. Lengthen. Lift your chest. Lengthen. Observe the back buttock. All right, release this foot down and we go to the other side. So you may find that one side is a little easier than the other. Left leg now. Bring it up. Those of you who have difficulties in the knees, you can work with your foot onto the seat of a chair. We've done this last week and the week before. I'll just do a quick demonstration of that so you can see. All right. So for those of you working in the normal way, the instructions are the same as the previous side. Those with knee difficulties, the foot comes up like this and you get the same action where you're trying to extend from the groin to that knee and keeping the pelvis level with the back to the wall. <clears throat> so the inner thigh is active, the outer hip is active on that standing leg. You've got to really hit back towards this foot and the foot comes not on the front of the thigh but on that inner side seam of your trousers. So we're getting that length here from the groin to the kneecap. Lift the chest, draw the shoulders back, breathe. Don't push into the back of your knee. Anybody who's got overextension in the knee joints, don't push into the back of that knee joint. Lengthen the thigh bone and breathe. All right, and releasing, well done. We're gonna come now for Parigasana. Those of you who've got knee problems, and I know there are a couple in this group, so if that applies to you, you have to imagine this is my wall at the end here, because you would want to put the chair against the wall. This is for people with knee problems, for whom kneeling is not gonna be an option. You can come into your Parigasana this way. With that heel onto the seat of a chair or onto a sofa, all right? For those without difficulties, if you have sensitive knees and a hard floor, you can put down a blanket to give you a little bit more softness. It's not obligatory. Uh, we're using a foam pad, but for those who can easily get their foot down onto the floor, 
then you can use a blanket or nothing indeed, indeed underneath your foot. We're going to start out like this with the foot, the ankle underneath the knee joint, pushing back. Now at the same time as you push back with your hand on your knee, this right groin has to move forwards and you press down here. Then we're going to extend the leg out, stretch, turn and go. All right, so let's give this a go. If you've got challenges in your shoulder, then I'll give you a, uh, an alternative with this. So start out kneeling onto your support. Look at your feet, make sure your feet are going straight back and get as much of your shin on the floor as you can. Actually just lift and lengthen the fronts of the shins like that. Put your hands onto your hips and take your right foot out. Now have your ankle underneath your knee. This, shin, this thigh bone at the moment is perpendicular. Place the back of your right hand to the front of the right knee and move your right groin forwards. As you move your right groin forwards, it's almost as though you're dropping this groin towards the floor. Breastbone, navel, pubic bone, all in one line. Now we're going to stretch that foot out and take the foot down. It may be that you can get your foot right to the floor. If that's the case, then you do so. You have to roll and rotate at the root of this thigh, but don't lose the action here in the frontal body. So we're turning. It should be quite strong. You should feel that kind of rinsing action at the top of that thigh bone where you're rotating the thigh bone in the hip socket. I can certainly feel it, so hopefully you can too. Stretch the arms out, extend into the fingertips. So like we did at the beginning of the class, rotate the arms at the root. And now we're going to extend, stretch, take that hand down onto your shin, top arm comes over. Now if there's difficulty in the shoulder, the arm stays up or you just take the hand down, stretch it back. Breathe. Keep rotating in the root of that thigh. Come up and going to the other side. So I'm going to move to the other side but you might find that you just want to turn yourself around if you don't need the screen. If you know what you're doing with this now, you may find that you can just swivel yourself around on your mat. It's a little bit quicker. So we're going to come again onto our blanket or folded mat. Lift and lengthen the shins. Press down with the fronts of the shins, fronts of the ankles, tailbone long, chest lifted. Take your foot out to a right angle. Move that knee back, move your left groin forwards. So get this sensation of this opening action within this inner thigh and groin area. Then stretch that foot out onto the foam pad or onto the floor. So you've got to really stretch down and really rotate. Really rotate. Your kneecap should be facing the ceiling. If it's pointing forwards, you're not doing enough rotation in that thigh muscle. So you've got to turn it. Turn it. It's strong action. Stretch the arms out. Extend into the fingertips. Keep the breastbone facing forwards. Rotate at the root. Stretch into your fingertips. Lift up. And then coming into the action. So don't try and come down too far. It, um, it's very easy to lose the action in this pose. So you have to imagine you're between two panes of glass as though you're inside a double glazed unit. So your back buttock area shouldn't be prodding at that back area of glass. All right, and coming up out of the actions and just sit back down onto your heels. If this is a difficult action, you can always put some foam pads there or those who have problems with this, then please do sit in Sukhasana simple cross legs instead. We're going to come into Shavasana now, either with the knees together and the toes turned in and the abdomen soft or with your legs stretched out or with your legs over a bolster. 
so the bolster would be horizontal I'll just show underneath the knees you can have blanket under your head but make sure that you are in a position where your back is rested let the legs stretch out turn the palms of the hands towards the ceiling let the eyes close so I'm going to leave you in your Shavasana I'd like you to be in that for at least five minutes 10 minutes if you can spare it and I'm going to need to leave you there I hope you enjoyed the class I really enjoyed teaching it so I look forward to seeing you again next time namaste